Okay, so now that we know how to simplify perfect squares, so for example, I can simplify the square root of 4, the square root of 9, the square root of 16, the square root of 25, so on and so on. I can also now simplify their negatives, the square root of negative 4, the square root of negative 16, the square root of negative 9, the square root of negative 25. What happens if I have a radical that is not a perfect square? Can I simplify that? In order to be in simplest form for a radical, I have to make sure there are no perfect squares or no factors of perfect squares and no negatives. I'm going to always reduce radicals by using this property here. And I didn't go back and draw in all my little lines before I started recording this. So it is the square root of a times b. It breaks to be a square root of a times the square root of b. Um, I only want to use this property with perfect squares. Um, and you'll kind of see what I mean here momentarily when I go over some examples. Notice that I can only do this with multiplication. I do not have a property that says the square root of a plus b breaks to be the square root of a plus the square root of b. So please be careful of that because that's a mistake that I see follow students all the way through their upper level math courses. I can only do this with multiplication. Um, and then of course I always have to take negatives out of the radical using the square root of negative, using the fact that the square root of negative one is i, which we um, looked at in the last video. So let's look at how I can simplify each of these. What happens if I have the square root of 20? Well, again, I'm going to ask myself, can I factor this um, into a perfect square times something? So I start thinking about the things that multiply to be 20. Well, 1 times 20 is 20. That's not going to help me. 2 times 10 is 20. I don't care because I only want to use this property with perfect squares. 20 is not divisible by 3. 20 is divisible by 4. It's 4 times 5. So I'm going to rewrite this as a square root of 4 times 5. Well then according to that property up above, I can say that's the same thing as the square root of 4 times the square root of 5. Well I know that the square root of 4 is just 2. I do not know what the square root of 5 is, so I leave that under a radical and there is my simplest form. Let's look at another example. Let's look at the square root of negative 32. So again, I only care about perfect squares. So I'm going to ask myself, is this divisible by any perfect squares? And I have that list of perfect squares that I memorized. If I don't remember them, I can write them on the top of my page. 4, oops, I forgot 9. 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, 100. And I know we had more, but that's about all I can fit. And I shouldn't really need anything bigger than that because I know what kind of examples I put on here. So now, again, looking at the square root of negative 32, first thing I'm going to ask myself is, is it divisible by any perfect squares? Well, I notice it's divisible by both 4 and 16. I'm always going to choose the bigger one. Um, but because I want to show you what happens if I don't choose the bigger one, I'm going to use 4, even though that's not a very smart move on my part. Um, there is another example because I think I have 5 total. There is another example where I'll show you um, how I can use the biggest one. So I'm going to go ahead and say, first of all, because there's a negative under this, I'm going to say this is the negative square root of negative. I'm going to run out of room if I put it up here. So I'm going to say this is the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 4 times 8. Well, that then gives me the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 4 times the square root of 8. Well, I know the square root of negative 1 is i. The square root of 4 is 2. I do not know the square root of 8. It is not a perfect square. However, and I always want to put my i in back because I think it's weird to say i too. However, when I look at 8, I notice 8 still has a factor that's a perfect square in it. 8 can still be broken into 4 times 2. Now, had I chose the 16 instead of the 4, I would be done at this point. But because I did not take my largest perfect square, all it means is I'm going to have to go through this process a second time. So I'm going to say that this is 2i times the square root of 4 times the square root of 2, since 4 times 2 is 8. I know the square root of 4 is 2. I notice that 2i was directly in front of the square root of 4, implying multiplication. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply these, giving me a final answer of 2 times 2, since it does not matter what order I multiply in, of 4i times the square root of 2. I know I'm in simplest form because I don't have any negatives under my radical, and I also don't have any perfect squares that are inside of 2, that 2 is divisible by.
Coming back up to look at example three. I have this negative square root of 75. So all that negative out front means is that once I get my answer, I'm going to put a negative in front of it. So the difference between when there's not a negative in front of it, and I'm just taking what we call the principal square root, or when I'm taking the negative of the principal square root. Because as we talked about before, um, I can say that negative 6 times negative 6 is 36, just like 6 times 6 is 36. So looking at the negative square root of 75, I'm going to say this is the same thing as the negative of, I see 75 is divisible by 25, so I'm going to say 25 times 3, which then gives me the negative of the square root of 25 times the square root of 3. The negative is out front, so I'm not going to take an i out. I only take an i out when the negative is under the radical. So this becomes the negative 5, since the square root of 25 is just 5, times the square root of 3. Again, 3 doesn't have any perfect factors that are perfect squares, and it also um, doesn't have a negative under the radical. So I'm going to go ahead and stop there. And then looking at my last three examples, 5, 6, and that should be 7, not 4. We already looked at example 4, so I'm going to change that to 7. Um, and looking at number 5, so I have the square root of 90. So again, I don't care if it can be divided by things that are not perfect squares. I'm only going to... Uh, sorry, I had to push pause. My phone rang, so I apologize if I'm repeating myself, but... Um, I'm going to do number 5 here, the square root of 90. So um, I'm going to ask myself if it can be divided by any perfect squares. I'm only worried about perfect squares. So again, I look at my list of perfect squares up at the top of my page, um, and I realize that 90 is divisible by 9. So I'm going to say the square root of 90 is the same thing as the square root of 9 times 10, which reduces to be square root of 9 times square root of 10. And I know the square root of 9 is just 3, since 3 times 3 is 9. I do not know the square root of 10. It does not have any other perfect um, square factors in it. There's also no negative under the radical, so I will stop there. I'm looking at number 6. I have this uh, negative square root of negative 8. So just like before, that negative is going to come and just drop down. And I'm going to ask myself is, uh, well, I see there's a negative underneath there, so I'm going to say that's the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 8. And then I'm going to ask myself, is the square root of 8 divisible by any perfect squares? And it is divisible by 4. So I'm going to say this is negative i, since the square root of negative 1 is i, times the square root of 4, times the square root of 2, since 4 times 2 is 8. I know the square root of 4 is just 2, so I get negative i times 2 times the square root of 2. Well, that's the same thing as just saying negative 2i times the square root of 2. And again, 2 is not divisible by any other perfect squares, and there is no negative, so I'm done. Looking at my final example, the square root of negative 48. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say that's the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 48. I look at my list of perfect squares, and I know that square root of 48 is divisible by 4. But if I look a little bit further on, I see that it's also divisible by 16. 16 times 3 is 48. So I'm going to say this is the same thing as negative 1 times the square root of 16 times the square root of 3. One big mistake I see is that people will say, hey, I know that's 8 times 6. I don't care because 8 and 6 aren't perfect squares. From here, the square root of negative 1 is i. The square root of 16 is 4. I do not know the square root of 3, so I leave it. Rewriting this in a little bit better form, I have 4i square root of 3 as my final answer. And that is how we can use the property square root of ab equals the square root of a times the square root of b to help us simplify um, radical expressions.